Hello, Girly Men listeners. While we pause our regular episodes and prepare a spectacular season two of the Girly Men podcast, we'd like you to enjoy some short bonus episodes co-hosted by my dear friend and rambunctious orange nun, Sister Unity. The Sister Unity of the Los Angeles House of Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence that we had in episode one. She's hilarious and she's irreverent, but she's also devastating in her academic acuum and her theater talent is brilliant. You'll hear the joy we have in the laughter while we're digging into these ideas, but her messages are packed with wisdom and insights many girly men will find life-affirming. So enjoy the show, my friends, and pay attention. Remember, you can find us anywhere podcasts can be found, from iTunes to Stitcher to Spotify. Wherever you find us, please hit that subscribe button. Sign up to our newsletter and our website at girlymen.com. That's G-E-R-L-E-M-E-N.com. It's a place to see some of our video outtakes from each episode. Or... Contact us on Facebook. Again, just search for Girly Men. And if you're feeling old school, send me an email at mike at girlymen.com. Enjoy the show. Sister Unity is here on our sixth mini episode between like the long chasm between season one and season two. Chasm. Yes. While well, me and my business partner, who you've recently met, um, are putting business together podcast. the GBTQ Greatness Boot Camp on October 10th. So... The last word of the day, mentorship in the gay community. I mean, does it exist? Is it just like a fantasy? How does it work? What is mentorship? What I've learned is it's different than like a coaching situation. Like coaches help you get better. Um, They might be mentors, but a a coach asks you what's important to you and develops that, Helps, helps you set your own agenda and helps you get what you want. A mentor is somebody that a mentee goes to and says, I love what you're doing in the world. Can you help me on my path and give me advice is one way I've heard it described. How are those different? One has permission to give advice and set the agenda. And the first, like the coach is listening, is more of like a, is not coming in with any preconceived ideas of, of where the person needs to go. That's interesting. I mean, these are just terms and everyone defines them for themselves. And my definitions, it was exactly the opposite because my experience of coaches are from high school PE teachers who are like, you'll be here at this time. You'll hit the fucking volleyball over the net. You'll hit the shuttlecock with the badminton racket. And then you will go to the shower and then you will go back to your class. And a mentor was much more like, like my theater professors who were like, Okay, what are you interested in? Let's see you do some work. I'll look at your work and then we'll comment about it. Oh, like a flip on that, what I just said. Yeah. yeah. And you're right. Everybody has their own. We, we talked about that in another episode. Everybody has their own established worldview and their own way of defining terms and, and, and whatnot. So both but of those things. You have elicited some hallmarks that for me are, are, are defining for mentorship. Mm-hmm. Listening, mm. seeing, perceiving, uh, listening, grokking the person who you are mentoring or the people that you are mentoring is essential and the first step. Well, the first step is introduction. Here's who I am. Here's my experience. Here's my resume. This is what you can avail yourself of if you Mm -hmm. choose to. And then you have to get to know, I mean, if you're going to plant turnips in the field, you got to find out whether it's loam or sand or clay. Yeah. Then Mm -hmm. it's improvisatory. The mentor brings to bear experience words that they may have developed to turn experience into teaching and methodologies Mm. and the construction of exercises, some of them obvious and some of them subtle or roundabout, all of which accomplish the burnishing, the polishing of the nascent talent and skills and propensities of the person being mentored. The phrase that I like to think of that is kind of the mission statement for mentoring for me is from my meditation master, make room for others good. So I'm going to equip the person with what I know if they want that, but also I am going to prepare space in the world for them to do what they do organically and or I will prepare them to prepare their own space, make their own way in the world to make make their own room for their own good. If I can't be an icebreaker and unclog the Northwest Passage, I'm going to 
you know, show them how that they how they can turn themselves into an icebreaker. Yeah, I, I think one of the most important things that you said in all of that is the, the nascent talents. You were talking about seeing that in the other person. I'm guilty of once I get my aha moment, I think everybody else should have the exact same aha moment <laughs> and get to it the exact same, get to it the exact same way I did. And and as I've gotten older, I've learned that that's not where to start. Yeah, it's um, got to be organic. You 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 have to know what that person is and see what their talents are and what their talents are not, what their propensities are and capabilities are and capacities are and are not. So is that happening anywhere in the gay community? How can we make that work better? Have you asked the younger people what they want? Many of them really want sex, a boyfriend, a drink, and and a dance floor, which at 20 to 20-something is totally fine. Well, which then makes me wonder if maybe having all those things intertwined with mentorship is acceptable. Oh, my God. So, so, so you're going to have like older, experienced, uh, shamanic men go to Mickey's and Rage in West Hollywood and go out on the dance floor and be like, hey, have you read Robert Bly's poetry about men and how father in the house is? I'm just saying I'm open to any ideas. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I think Robert I Bly think dancing on the dance floor. I think it's kittens. Mickey's. It's Kitten? kittens under the fridge. You set out a saucer of milk and they come or they don't come. Mm-hmm. So I think mentors just put out a saucer of milk. Now, there are very creative, enticing ways to do that. I have a cat. I have a relationship with a cat <laughs> who is human, who grew up in a Mormon family and whose sexuality was not seen, valued, instructed. It was, in fact, guarded against. And through knowing me for a while, I've been able to be a place where he can explore himself and fulfill his needs. Mm. And uh, it's been so encouraging watching him blossom since. Uh. And one of the things that he did recently was he went to a naked yoga class. So the presence and advert and marketing of a naked yoga class for men is a saucer of milk. Grinder happened to have uh, a saucer of milk with tendrils it was looking for you know you know i I was on grinder looking for sex when i met him um but hopefully with any luck i have a few saucers of milk available that come with the package depending Mm -hmm. on how our conversation goes yes and this one went that way yeah so be be a saucer of milk or be be aware of your saucers of milk be aware of your resources uh your gifts that you have to offer you know polish them have them at the ready don't Mm -hmm. go pushing them on people just let them be around. Create a presence for them in the community and market them without pushing them on people, but market them so that people are aware of them. Gay pride festivals and parades are enormous saucers of milk. There are lighthouses with a beacon that reach everywhere, but they're also saucers of milk. And they draw kids from Orange County and Kern County and the Antelope Valley where they get to have community with queerness, which is an enormous uh, mentoring experience for them. You're saying a lot of the things I heard uh, Don Kilhefner talk about and uh, just what you're saying, being a, a beacon as opposed to being like a dog catcher. Or, or a drug pusher. Yeah, not that kind of a saucer of milk. That's Yeah, that's, be a saucer that's... of milk with a lighthouse attached to it. How's that for a weirdly extended mixed metaphor? Well, and I would guess it's it's not about possessiveness either. I think that's a big difference with the with the mentor. It's allowing somebody to be a a resource. The mentor is a resource without an expectation other than to show up with respect. Unless you have anything else on mentorship, thank you, Sister Unity, for being here. Not just on this episode, but six episodes. You've been here for like a month and a half. I just want to thank you for helping us fill space between our first season and our second season. And you're always hilarious. You're always thoughtful and spiritually connected and grossly irreverent. Totally will accept that. (laughs) (laughs) Mike, I want to say thank you very, very much for having me come and speak and explore these topics with you. It really is a very pleasurable experience to engage my intuition in responding to your questions about how to use things like inspiration and celebration and intuition in both receiving mentorship and in mentoring, 
all of these topics are juicy and so useful for gay men. And I laud you once again for being a provider of these conversations in our community. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being receptive to that and bringing this to us in a, such a, a great way. I hope you enjoyed this bonus episode of the Girly Men podcast. I want to thank Sister Unity for her magic, her wisdom, and most of all, for her huge open heart. We started this podcast with the promise that we'd deliver heart-centered connection. Both Sister Unity and I want you to feel the love that we have for ourselves, for each other, and for you, our queer and dear family. We are all one, we are all connected, and we'll see you next time.